What is up guys, my name is Tom and welcome to Crosstalk, the channel on audio, microphones and everything surrounding it. Thanks for watching. Today we're looking at this guy, the M-Gage 416 by Sennheiser. This is obviously a very well-known microphone. It sees usage in studios for professional voiceovers, in commercials, movie trailers, you name it. Basically, this mic, you see it all over the world and in many cases it gets chosen above other mics like the legendary Neumann U87 for voiceover purposes, this one is just pretty much the best thing you can get right now. It is such an industry standard. It is, well, it gets used so, so much in, in those voiceover studios because of its just perfect sound for those voiceover applications. So we'll just go over the uh, quick uh, description of this microphone. So the brief description that Sennheiser gives uh, to this microphone, I'm just going to go over it. Uh, so the MKH416 is a directional studio microphone, which is also especially suited to outdoor applications. So that's the first part. So it is directional. So you can see it's a very long shaft, basically. Uh, it is a long and thin microphone. If, you ever, if you've never seen a microphone like this before, it might look very strange to you. So this mic is basically, basically very directional. So it's, it's actually made to be used on a pole. Uh, for example, you've seen those guys with a pole, uh, you know, from the press or when they're shooting a movie or something, there's a large pole with a, with a microphone on it with usually covered by a dead cat, you know, like those uh, furry little things uh, that's basically covering the mic. Chances are it's going to be a Sennheiser MK4, MKH416, just like this one. Uh, so it gets used in that in outdoor applications, and uh, but it's also for voiceover, it just found that sweet spot for those voiceover artists to get this microphone and try it out and it just sounds amazing. Um, so obviously it is highly directive, so its high degree of directivity makes the MKH416 a superb microphone for film and television, including outside broadcast applications. So whenever you're outside, you you'd put this mic and you get some, you get a dead cat on it and it's just really good. So I'll show you a little bit of their directional uh, you know, uh, properties of this mic. So when I move off axis, you can tell it's already, you know, very muted right now. When I get back in, it sounds good again. And then when I move over here, you can tell it switches over. I mean, it changes very, very quickly. So uh, that's because of the super cardioid pickup pattern. Um, so it is a 48 volt, you need 48 volt phantom power for this microphone, obviously, because it is a condenser. Um, let's see. So it is highly directive. Uh, it has also got a very low inherent self noise. Uh, I'm not sure if you can tell. Uh, I have a really good uh, preamp right now. Uh, my interface that I'm recording on is the Fireface UCX by RME. Uh, so it's a very good uh, interface that's basically not going to add any self noise at all, especially on this uh, gain level. Um, I'll go over the settings with you. So right now I am recording at about 35 de decibels of gain. Uh, so this mic is very sensitive. Um, you don't need a lot of gain to get really good result with this mic. You know, some of the mid-tier interfaces will work with this one very well. And even those portable things, you know, like a Zoom H5, I think it is. Uh, so when you have those Zoom devices or a Tascam with an XLR connector on it that supplies 48 volts, chances are it will drive this microphone really well. So I've also seen voiceover artists taking this on the road with them on vacation, make a little voice booth and just recording on the go. Uh, for portable recording, this one is also very, very good because it's so sensitive. The maximum sound pressure level is 130 decibels. So you can get a lot of sound into this guy. 130 decibels, it's very loud. You can get very loud with this mic without overloading it at all. The finish on it is matte black. Uh, so that's also something it says on the spreadsheet. What I want to say about that is the finish on it is not very durable, uh, as far as I've seen. I've borrowed one from a good friend of mine, and this one I got secondhand for really cheap. Uh, and it has all these little scratches on it. I'll show you it in a, in a separate shot. Uh, so you get all those little scratches on it. The paint is just not very durable at all. So it gets very scuffed up. You know, it looks very... Uh, very bad after uh, after a while. If you use it intensively, it'll start to look like this automatically. I've seen this on all MKH416s that I've had. Um, I've never bought a new one, um, but uh, yeah. So the ones that have been seen some use, I've seen the paint scratching off. Maybe with the newer generations of MKH416, that's a little bit better. But as far as I know, 
they still use the same paint on it. So if you're allergic to a little bit of scuffed paint on a microphone, then this microphone might not be for you. But again, if you hear the sound, then you know you should be you know you should be pretty convinced that this microphone is just really good. So if you look at the polar diagram, uh, you can you can see I'll put it on the screen for the separate. Um, frequencies you get a different kind of polar uh, response and Sennheiser gives you a really really de detailed uh, polar diagram for that but as you can see it is pretty directional as you can tell very directional indeed so there you go the frequency response curve on this microphone it is actually very interesting so it has a very very uh pronounced uh, boost on the higher frequencies so we can see between two and pretty much 10 kilohertz, we can see a very wide bump over there. Uh, so yeah, that also adds to its characteristic, you know, it's good sound for broadcast and for, you know, for uh, voiceover, you get that really nice boost in the voice region. So it's really good for voiceover. It's really good for any kind of voice work, really. Um, because of also that boost, obviously, you can turn it off, there's no real options on here um, for you know, switching anything like the uh, the SM7B, for example. But then again, um, it is just very good on its own. And obviously, you can EQ it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I personally really like how it sounds just standard. Uh, right now, what you're listening to is without any equalization at all. The only thing I've done to it is a little bit of dynamics processing, a little bit of compression to make it sounds consistent for the video. What are my personal impressions of it? This microphone right now is my daily driver. I use it every day, single day for anything I do. I use this microphone because it's just so versatile. It's, you know, I can talk into it, you know, I can use it for outside. If I ever want to record something outside, I can take it out on a little portable recorder. You know, it is so very versatile. It sounds so very good for me. Um, and I just love how it sounds. It's probably my favorite mic that I've heard so far, together with the uh, Neumann TLM 103 that I've had. Uh, that was also, I found a very, very nice microphone to listen to, but this one just tops it a little bit. So in my opinion, in certain conditions. So what's very important with this microphone is the angle that you use it at. So uh, I, have to, I have it angled slightly downwards, as you can see, because if I change the, uh, the direction of it, so you can tell that if you have it pointing down at you, then it already sounds a little bit more nasal. Uh, so you get that nasal cavity in there. Uh, as, you, as you know, it's very directional, so it will get a little bit more nasal. So what I like to do is either have it from the side, like this, where it's just pretty neutral, or have it from the top, and then you get a little bit more of that throaty, low-end sound that just gets added to it. Uh, because of its directional, um, properties. Uh, so in my opinion, if you have it pointed down for any kind of voiceover application, it just does a good job at capturing your voice uh, in a great way. And I would hi highly recommend this microphone. So for, like I was saying, for the price, it is, if you buy it new, it's about a thousand euros or a thousand dollars. But I have to say, uh, this microphone secondhand, you can get it really cheap. So this mic I got for about 400. So uh, mostly I think the price difference, so th why this microphone doesn't retain its value very well is because of the paint. It's purely cosmetic because in terms of sound and in terms of, you know, industry standard capability, it is super good. So it retains its sound and all the properties that you want, but it just the cosmetics give it that price crash. Basically, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't keep its value very well. So I would not buy this mic new ever. If you want, if you, if you want to get this mic, I would recommend looking it up online secondhand, and I'm sure you will find a example like this that works perfectly well. Just has a little bit of scratches on it on the paint because it's been used. You know what I mean? It's been used in the field or whatever. Uh, but this mic is incredibly durable. It is, you know, it's, it's 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 a really good mic. It's durable. It sounds great. It's versatile. Um, it just doesn't hold its value very well. So if you want to get this mic, get it secondhand, and you'll enjoy it very much. So that was pretty much my wrap up of the, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, this was my review of the MKH416. I love it very much. This is probably my favorite mic that I've ever used. 
more reviews will be coming to this channel if I get more microphones, if I get my hands on more microphones. So I will see you in the next one.